Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And you know, we see thousands of patients and we do thousands of lab tests on those patients. I am a clinically practicing doctor, uh, even though I'm flapping my gums on the internet right now. Um, what I'm talking about is based on what we see in our office. And one of the interesting things, and it's, it's statistically higher in women than it is in men. Um, uh, it's statistically significant, but when we analyzed our last thousand patients, right at 82% of my female patients that came to see me, now pre-selected, this is not a spectrum of our society, but 82% of them were being treated for thyroid disease. 82% of them were on medication for thyroid disease. And the majority of them had no idea what disease they had. And I said, okay, you're on Synthroid, or oh, you're on Cytomel, why? Why? Well, some of them had surgery, some of them had a diagnosis, most of them, oh, because my numbers were low. Folks, that's not a diagnosis. That's an observation. That's hypothyroidism, but it's an observation. Why are you hypothyroid? You're not taking enough iodine, you've got Hashimoto's disease. Why? What's the problem? Because the problem might be reversible, but every one of those people mostly the women, have been put on a medication for the rest of their lives without the doctor ever knowing why. And, and the worst ones are the ones where the doctor said, well, we're gonna, you come in, you're a little obese, we're going to boost your metabolism. We're going to put you on some thyroid hormone, boost your metabolism, get you to burn it off. And of course, they lose a bit of weight because you're jump-starting them for a little while. But look at the damage that that does throughout their hormonal system. Because every hormone is interconnected with every other hormone. But they don't look at it that way. They want to see instant results right now. So let's break this down. What blood work do I do when I see a new patient? I look at their thyroid. I look to see if they're on a thyroid medication or not. I take that into account. But remember, this is a negative feedback system. And it can be influenced by certain external in, uh, influences. So based on any diagnostics that they have, if they've had their thyroid taken out or if they've had uh, radiation for Graves disease or if they've had other thyroid surgeries or have a known diagnosis, obviously we're going to look at that. But here's my standard uh, blood work. I always do a free T3, free T4, total T3, total T4, TSH. Those are my five standard blood works that I order. I will from time to time do a reverse T3. I always, always do thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin antibodies, TPO and TGA. And then from time to time, I'll do a TSI, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. I usually do that the second round based on whether or not someone has a likelihood of Graves' disease. I do not measure iodine levels. So let's break this down. Why do I do what I do? Well, first of all, first and foremost, salt is so, so important for people to eat. And the first recommendation I make to people, let's, let's take iodine deficiency out of the equation. Let's take it out of the equation. A lot of people come in and they're taking two or three drops of Lugol's iodine, which is fine. I have no problem with that. But why not just get it as in, in one of your condiments? So what I ask people to do is to get a standard iodized salt, make sure it's dextran free, a standard iodized salt. And I actually mix 50-50. I mix my iodized salt with Redmond Real Salt. I love Redmond Real Salt. And I mix the two. And I know I've taken iodine deficiency out of the equation in my diet because I add a lot of salt to my food. So I don't measure iodine levels. I don't care if they're high or low. Take them out of the darn equation by putting yourself on iodine as a condiment to your food together with your salt, which you have to take any, well, not have to, should be taking every, every day, in my opinion. Then we look at the T3, T4, total and free, and the TSH. Remember, this is a negative feedback hormonal pathway. So if TSH is high, it means somewhere along the line that either you've got a tumor in your, in your pituitary gland that's producing TSH by itself, and under those conditions, your T3 and T4 should be very low, or the feedback system isn't working well and there's autonomy of production by your thyroid gland. Boy, look at those ratios. 
And even if someone's on medication, are they adequately suppressed? And what's going on? So I need all of those numbers. If I'm worried about Graves' disease, I'll order a TSI, TSI as I said, separately. I do, don't do that routinely. But also remember, the T4 becomes T3. So if you're on thyroxine or levothyroxine, if you're on a pure T4 medication, what's your T3 levels? Free and total. And we look also, by the way, at the CMP. I look at the globulins. I look at the carrier molecules just to make sure those aren't off. They very rarely are, but those weren't looking at. So we look at those ratios. We look at where those numbers are. And don't just look at the normal tables. You want to see where they are in the normal tables. Are they leaning closer toward the bottom, closer toward the top? Where do I want that particular person to be? Sometimes I want them to be very on the, on the, on the very low end or even slightly low, especially on T3. I'll come back to that in a second. Sometimes I want them to be on the higher levels. Sometimes I want the TSH to be super suppressed if we're on suppressor dosing. Suppressive dosing. Sometimes I want the TSH to be a little higher to drive the thyroid when they're weaning off medication. So there's no one answer, but I look at all of those numbers together. If I don't have all the numbers, I have incomplete data. How many doctors don't just order a TSH and treat someone based on TSH? That's ridiculous. And the most important numbers are the thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin antibodies because they do not only diagnose, they also help me to understand the progression of Hashimoto's disease, which is an autoimmune disease related <clears throat> to grain consumption and carbohydrate consumption. That is the commonest autoimmune thyroid disease that we have in America. And most people are undiagnosed, whether they're not on medication or not, but they've got Hashimoto's disease, male and female. And we have to understand that in the context of all the other hormones. Now, here's an interesting uh, issue that most people will not, most physicians, even folks practicing in the ketogenic space don't know. If you see a low T3 hormone, what do you do? Well, you've got to look at all the other numbers. But the most important thing to understand, and I've got a huge group of veteran fat-adapted ketogenic people, whether they are mostly carnivore or not. In other words, their insulins are below 4, C-peptides are below 1, blood sugars are in the 60 to 75 to 80 uh, uh, level. These people are supremely insulin sensitive. They do not even, so they socially distance from carbohydrates. They don't even come within 6 feet of them. They should have. And I've learned this through my practice. They should have a low to low normal T3 because their TSH is also going to be low to normal. Just like the insulin levels are low, their thyroid hormone should be low. They're functioning absolutely fine. They do not have thyroid hormone deficiency. They have thyroid hormone perfection. It's a hormonal vibration that we're striving for, not these massive fluctuations. And if their insulin hormones are vibrating and their growth hormones are vibrating and their uh, uh, thyroid hormones are vibrating, that's okay even if they are below the standard American diet, normal numbers. So you got to know what you're dealing with. And most doctors don't because they don't see enough volume and they don't do this testing. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody, but it's important to understand that. And if you as a patient are going to a doctor, they need to know what the hell they're going to look at. We do that. We do that and we'll give you the interpretation. But they all go together. All of these numbers go together. So if you don't check your insulin numbers and your T3 is low and your TSH is low, where are you? What disease do you have? Or do you have a disease? If you want to learn more, if you're interested in getting blood work done and getting our interpretation, if you're interested in help with the biology of how we make this happen from a dietary perspective, give us a shout. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. 561-517-0642 to set up a consult, email or text, WhatsApp if you're outside of the country. It's a plus one, I believe. And if there's value to this discussion for you, to try to keep this content free, if you, if you don't mind my gum flapping on the internet, throw us a dollar or two, because this is all done free on our time on the weekends. Charitable organization that pays for the production of these videos you can PayPal send us money as a gift at robert at jackschildren.com or alternatively to our Patreon account at Carb Addiction Doc. I'm not very active on Patreon. I apologize for that, but we appreciate the donations. Thank you.